Unreal Engine is everywhere, from massive AAA titles to the smallest indie games. It's quickly become the game engine of choice and it's produced some of the most visually stunning games we've ever seen. But with so many studios switching to it, is the industry becoming too dependent on one single tool? And is Unreal Engine a creative playground or a copy paste machine that's negatively reshaping the gaming industry? Now, just to be clear, I'm not a game developer. I'm a fan, a gamer. This video isn't meant to trash Unreal Engine or blindly defend it. It's about trying to understand why so many games feel the same right now and why Unreal gets so much love and hate in the process. So here's what we're gonna dive into. How game engines actually work, what makes Unreal so appealing to developers, the pros, the cons, and how it compares to other engines. And finally, the impact it's having on creativity, performance, and the future of gaming. So with that being said, let's start with the basics. What even is a game engine? A game engine is a framework that has tools and libraries that developers use to create games. If you think of a game engine as a film studio where developers have all the tools they need to bring their vision to life, then it's easy to see why some engines are preferred over others. A well-equipped studio with top-tier cameras, lighting, and other high-end technology will always be more attractive to filmmakers than one with outdated equipment or missing tools. The same applies to game engines. The more powerful and complete the tool set, the more developers want to use it and the easier those tools are to use, the more likely developers are to stick with that engine. No one wants to waste time fighting their tools when they could be creating. That's exactly the appeal of Unreal Engine, at least if you ask Epic Games. They position it as the ultimate game engine, a place where everything is set up and ready to go. They say developers don't have to start from scratch because Unreal provides the powerful tools and the assets right out of the box. And that's clearly true to some extent, at least, where so many studios and developers wouldn't use it, right? Just because a studio has access to top of the line tools doesn't automatically mean that the final product is going to be amazing. To be clear, some games take full advantage of what Unreal Engine offers, pushing visual boundaries and delivering great experiences. Take a game like Sea of Thieves that create an environment you can get lost in or even Fortnite. And I'll be honest, I haven't touched that game since its peak, but the visual evolution of that game is very interesting, but others not so much. In fact, some of these games end up looking sort of the same. And a big reason for that is how easy it is to use the stock assets that come with Unreal Engine. I specifically mentioned Sea of Thieves and Fortnite because many games developed on Unreal focus on realistic graphics and art style. Unreal gives you a huge library of pre-made content like materials, textures, and meshes designed to help devs build foundational elements for their games, which is great for speeding up development. But if you're not customizing or building on top of that, then you end up with games that look like five others on Steam. And you've probably seen it yourself. Dimly lit environments, dense and fog covered forests, and highly reflective, futuristic sci-fi settings, right? It looks decent, but it also looks familiar. Now, to be fair, some of these games are made by small teams or solo devs working with limited time and budgets. And using high quality assets out of the box can be the difference between finishing a game or never shipping it at all. But from the outside looking in, it adds to this growing feeling that Unreal Engine is creating a sea of games that kind of blend together visually. And after researching online and hearing what some of the devs had to say, it's not always about the lack of resources or time. Sometimes devs are just unfamiliar with the engine's deeper features. And since Unreal gives you so much out of the box, it's easier to rely on the defaults instead of diving in to optimize properly. Which is ironic because one of the things that makes Unreal Engine so appealing is the large community and the abundance of video tutorials and threads out there with guides and explanations. And look, I'm not here to sit on devs or people out here trying to hustle and make a living. Just like any industry or any field, you have people that are experienced and others that are working their way up. However, major studios are for sure not going to pay a well-experienced dev the premium that they deserve for their work when they can pay someone else a fraction of that cost and get a product that's good enough to make profits. Besides visuals and creative direction, fixing bugs, performance, and proper optimization are all things that have to be considered when designing a game. These are things that all require experience and knowledge of the game engine. More on that shortly, but it's worth noting that Unreal Engine is source accessible. That means if there's a bug or a limitation, studios don't have to wait for Epic to fix it. They can modify the engine themselves. 
Now, it's not open source in the purest legal sense. Epic still owns it. They have licensing requirements, but source accessible is more than enough for devs to fix or tweak the engine to work in a very specific way that lines up with their vision of their video game. There are other engines that are fully open source or source accessible, but that level of control is rare when it comes to high-end game engines like Unreal. This is what makes it appealing for both AAA titles or in studios and for indie developers. But again, not every team has the skill, time or resources to do that. And in the case of the major studios that do have the resources, they're in the business to make money. Minimizing spending and maximizing profits will always come first. Photorealism is one of the standout features of Unreal Engine, but I don't know what the obsession is with all the games aiming to have a photorealistic art style. Just because it's possible to achieve photorealism easily doesn't mean it's the only way to use the engine. I mean, look, photorealistic graphics can look good, but they're not always the right choice. If a game doesn't need realism to tell its story or create its world, then chasing it for the sake of marketing just kind of misses the point. The art style should match the content. I mean, imagine Mario Kart with ultra realistic cars and drivers. It just wouldn't be the same experience. And some of the most memorable games lean into style, not realism. And that's what makes them stand out. And look, don't get me wrong. I'm not against photorealism, but what's the point of pushing for photorealistic graphics if the game doesn't really call for that? But that's not the only reason Unreal Engine has gotten so popular. As I mentioned earlier, it's incredibly user friendly for developers and has a large community with many tutorials online. This makes it easier for developers to resolve issues or get up to speed with features within the engine. This has resulted in major game studios switching their very popular franchises over to Unreal. We've already seen a handful of big name studios ditch their in-house engines in favor of Unreal. But how does Unreal compare to those other engines? So CD Projekt Red made some of the best looking games with their internal uh, Red engine, but even they dropped it because uh, apparently it couldn't scale across multiple projects or deliver the stability that they needed. The company is now juggling a few projects at once with The Witcher 4 and the Cyberpunk uh, sequel. So even though the engine is clearly capable of delivering high quality visuals, the stability and the performance of the engine or lack thereof was enough to sway them to Unreal. Now, that doesn't mean Unreal doesn't have its own performance issues, but we'll get to that in a little bit. One of my favorite games of all time is Hunt Showdown. I've spent over 1100 hours playing it. It runs on the Cry Engine, the same engine behind the legendary Crisis series. If you ever heard of the meme, but can it run Crisis? That's where it comes from. Back in the day, Crisis pushed the limits of what PC graphics could do, and the Cry Engine was a big part of that. Cry Engine today excels in optimization and performance, but it isn't as popular because apparently it requires significant experience to optimize, which is a major issue considering how greedy studios have gotten. So as I mentioned previously, studios are businesses. This means that the end goal will always be to make money, maximize profits and minimize spending. Unreal Engine makes that easier than ever. They can just hire cheap labor because just about anyone can access the engine without any upfront cost and it's industry standard at this point. This is likely one of the reasons the engine has become, you know, has grown to such a large community. But by the way, Unreal Engine is free to use for game development, but once you make over $1 million in revenue, Epic takes 5% uh, royalty on anything beyond that point. The catch with Unreal Engine is that while it gives developers incredible tools, it doesn't guarantee great games. Like I mentioned earlier, when everything's laid out for you, it's easy to fall into patterns. And that's why we're seeing a lot of games that start to feel visually similar. Now, there are a lot of incentives for studios to switch to Unreal. Just having built with Unreal Engine attached to the game can generate interest. Add that to the massive set of features, uh, the library of online tutorials, and the ability to hire developers from a huge talent pool. And then the switch to Unreal starts to make sense for studios. I mean, for anyone. But that doesn't mean it's all good. A quick Google search will show you uh, threads and forums with complaints about Unreal's performance issues like stuttering, demanding features that use up a lot of resources, and developers not optimizing their games well. And here's where things get a little bit complicated. Tools like Nanite and Lumen are meant to make game development easier, but they can actually limit creativity. Nanite handles detailed 3D models without tanking performance, and Lumen handles how light behaves by automatically simulating realistic lighting and reflections. But because they automate so much of the process, developers might rely on them too heavily instead of creating custom 
solutions, which lead to games that look technically impressive, but creatively similar, if that makes any sense. It's kind of like using a smartphone camera with a bunch of auto settings and filters. You can snap a decent photo with zero effort, but it does most of the work, all of the work really for you. So you never really learn how to expose properly, control lighting and, or adjust the settings manually. So this is the thing, like good tools make things easier, but sometimes at the cost of developing skill or making creative choices. And that's what's happening with Unreal Engine in some cases. If the engine handles most of the heavy lifting, it's tempting to stick with what works, rely on presets and skip the extra steps that give a game its own identity. And when that happens across an entire industry, you start seeing a lot of games that look and feel the same. Look, I'm not an industry insider, that's my disclaimer, but based on the research I've done for this video, there's a pattern. Because Unreal is now the industry standard, students in game development programs or self-taught devs for that matter, often default to learning Unreal Engine first. That creates a huge wave of entry-level talent who are good enough to get by. Again, I'm not trying to knock anyone, just like any other industry, you'll have amateurs, super experienced professionals and everything in between. And for studios, that's appealing, especially if they can hire someone that will do a good enough job for a fraction of the cost. If they can pay less and still ship a game, they will. That's just business. But over time, it leads to a cycle. As these junior devs gain experience and ask for more money, they risk being replaced with the next wave of good enough talent. So in a weird way, the accessibility and popularity of Unreal Engine, which is partly what makes it so great, also makes it easy for studios to cut corners and adds pressure on developers to constantly prove that they're worth more than the cheapest option. That's why it's so important that developers have alternatives. When one engine becomes the default, it's easy for creativity to get boxed in. Whether it's due to market pressure, limited resources, or just pure convenience, Giving developers more tools and more freedoms to choose the right engine for their vision is a win for everyone. In short, what I'm trying to say is that Unreal Engine needs more competition. I hope that going forward, we as gamers will support studios and developers that are thinking outside of the box. I think we'll see a lot of indie developers take Unreal in a more intentional direction, prioritizing optimization, experimenting with new art styles, and breaking away from photorealism just for the sake of marketing. Honestly, that's where some of the most exciting innovation usually comes from anyway. People who are passionate and willing to try something different. But with the current state of the industry, it's only a matter of time before people get fed up. So to be completely honest, I don't think Unreal Engine is entirely to blame. I think it's the industry as a whole. It's not like Epic is limiting how people use the engine or restricting them to certain features or assets but they're still a business and of course they're gonna be biased and promote their product in the best light. But it's really just the state of the game industry right now. So studios are looking to maximize profits and minimize spending, and that means taking shortcuts. Unreal Engine is just one part of the many different factors that have shaped today's gaming landscape. I made a separate video on the tragic state of the gaming industry where I talk about hardware prices increasing, but game optimization and performance getting worse. If you want to check that out, I'll link it above. But I'm curious what everyone else thinks. Let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Drop a like if you enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.